Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the continuation of chapter 3, the revelation of God's mystery. We've been, uh, uh, we began last week in, in the book of Ephesians, and we, we, st we, we went, we started on, we, sorry, we've gone until a good start, my bad, but, um, I'm just very excited just to be here, just to, uh, be with, uh, all of you here in this, uh, through this, uh, media, uh, a, I'm very grateful to God, first of all, just because uh, He's been good and He's been merciful. Um, the reason is because why not? Why not be thankful to, to God because of whether it's a good thing or a bad thing? We need to be grateful to God. And the most important thing that we need to remember, the most important thing that, that we all need to to keep doing is keep praying for one another keep praying for for uh, each other and keep praying for our church keep praying for for the leadership so that God can help us that God can can lead us into his purpose so we can keep fulfilling his purpose and I'm very grateful and I'm very thankful and I'm very happy just to be here very just happy just to be here because I can share uh, a little bit of what God has given me through these lectures. Um, I also want want to want to uh, want you to uh, be uh, feel encouraged that uh, brother. Uh, I feel encouraged and, and keep on praying for brother Nathan, Pastor Nathan, and brother Jim. Uh, I know that they they've been very supportive, and I know that when they, when they come back. Uh, they're, they're, they're gonna they're gonna be truly truly a, a blessing uh, also we, I want to thank all the good comments that you have, they have given to me uh, they've been uh, of, uh, of a huge blessing and and they have encouraged me to continue uh, heading forward and uh, I'm very very happy very happy uh, just to just to be able to um, I'm sorry, just to be able to, to continue these classes. So, we began Ephesians chapter 3, the revelation of God's mystery. And we're on God's mystery of and man's place in it revealed. So, last week we were reviewing and we were looking at the mystery of God. And last week... I told you, and during these classes, I revealed that mystery. Sometimes a mystery is not easy. It's not easy to solve. That's why it's called a mystery. It, it takes time. But the mystery of God it, is very simple. It's Jesus. So that's God's mystery re revealed to the world. Now, Paul has taken on to himself to do this. To actually reveal the mystery of God to all men. Why? Because he was chosen. He was chosen to be the apostle to the Gentiles. He was chosen to be the, the, the apostle to the Gentiles. So, we are going to jump straight right through. And if you can open up your Bibles. Open up your Bibles to verses 8 and 9. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it very quickly, and I'm going to use the, the New International Version. And I know that it's in, in, in the notes, it's going to, it's going to be in uh, the New King James Version. So, uh, let, 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 me, let me start. And it says, the, the Word of God says in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, verse 8. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ. Verse 9. And to make plain to everyone, everyone the administration of this mystery, which for ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. Verses 8 and 9 are Paul's presentation of the mystery. 
to me who I am less than the least of all saints. Paul marveled at the grace given to him by which he was has called to, to preach the gospel that makes mystery a reality. When we consider Paul's personal history, we see that his calling was really was, was all grace. And yes, if you remember his, his story, Paul, Paul was a Pharisee. Paul was a persecutor. And if you remember, God had grace. And he was chosen to be the apostle of the Gentiles. He was chosen to go to kings and governments and be the apostle of the, the Gentiles, to be that preacher, to reach the Gentile community. So it, it's, it, it, it's amazing when you think about how, how uh, Paul's story changed in order for, uh, for, for, for it to become a reality in grace. So that, that is something uh, amazing. And Spurgeon says, But while Paul was thus thankful for this office, his success in it greatly humbled him. A fuller of a vessel becomes the deeper it sinks in the water. A plenitude of grace is a cure for pride. We all have been there. We're very prideful at times. And at some point of our life, we've exceeded in our pride. In our pride. However, Paul wasn't prideful. He was very humbled. And even if you look at him now and say, Paul was, a, was the best, in our eyes, he was. And still is. He's one of the best missionaries and best theologians ever. Because God placed him there. But he always thought less of himself. He humbled himself. And if, if, you, if you take a notice, Paul, the meaning of Paul means small. Least. But Saul means great. So if you think about Paul became less. He was humbled. He didn't want any credit. He didn't want the glory. He wanted a plenitude of grace to be the cure for pride. He wasn't prideful. He had pride for Christ, of course. He was proud of being a Christian. But he wasn't prideful for other things. Right? Spurgeon continues on saying, Preachers ought to grow in grace. For their very calling places them at the great advantage, since they are bound to search in the scriptures and to be much, uh, much in prayer. It is a choice, mercy to be per uh, permitted to preach the gospel. I wish some of you would be ambitious of it, for the earnest preachers are wanted. Let that sink in for a while. It's not about pride. It's not about our credit. And I know that we have a lot of preachers nowadays that want credit, want their own credit, that are seeking their own glory, except to preach for the glory of God. So nowadays, earnest preachers, serious preachers, are wanted. Those preachers that will humble themselves, that would preach, that would live by what they preach. I know that several of us who are preachers fell at that at some point, and I'm including myself. At some point of our lives, we have failed. Like any other preachers, teachers, pastors, we're not exempt from making mistakes. But if we humble ourselves, if we humble ourselves and make God, make Him grow, and we become less, 
that's when we are going to be earnest preachers. Because it's mercy that allows us to preach the gospel. It's not anything else. It's His grace, it's His mercy that allows us, whether you're a preacher or not, to teach, preach, or even speak the gospel. Right? That I should preach. The ancient Greek word translated preach literally means to announce good news. Paul's preaching was simply the announcement of the good news of, uh, of what God has done in Jesus. The unsearchable riches of Christ. The mystery is like great riches of the Gentiles. They can now become, uh, come before God in, in a standing they could only dream of before. And if you can remember, Gentiles weren't allowed in the temple. They couldn't get closer to God. That's why Jesus came and broke those barriers. Came in and destroyed anything that was... Because he, he died for humanity. He didn't die for a, a, an exclusive group. Now the Gentiles were the same as the Jews. Standing before God. Right? Paul tried to figure out the greatness of God's grace and started tracking it out as one might track out the shore of a lake. Now, I'm going to ask you, is that possible? And if you have done that, props to you. But if you haven't really tracked out the shore of a lake, well, Here's the explanation. Paulson discovered that it wasn't a lake at all, but an, an, but an ocean, an immeasurable sea. God's riches are unsearchable. We will never know them completely. You will never know God's riches. You will never imagine how much is it of God's riches, of God's treasures, because it's unmeasurable, it's unsearchable, it's limitless. You can't even imagine how much, right? And Spurgeon tells us this. Spurgeon says, I am bold to tell you that my master's riches of grace are so unsearchable that he delights to forgive and forget enormous sin. The bigger the sin, the more glory to his grace. If you are over head and ears in debt, he is rich enough to discharge your liabilities. If you are at the very gates of hell, he is able to pluck you from the jaws of destruction. That's how big your God is. The riches of His grace, of His grace, are immense. That He is able to forgive and forget enormous sin. The Bible says that He throws your sins into the deepest oceans. Into the deepest oceans. The bigger the sin, the more glory to His grace. Now there's no classification of sin. Big sin or small sin, sin is sin. Now there's a, there's a difference between because of the severity of the sin or the, uh, the seriousness, the gravity of the sin. But there's no, there's no small sin or big sin that God cannot forgive you from. And if you're in debt, His riches are more than enough to help you. In other words, if you don't have strength, 
He has the sufficient strength to get you up, to make you walk, and to even help you run. And even though you're at the gates, you're on the very low point, he's able to stretch out his head and lift you right back up. He's able to do that through grace. Because of his grace. And it is all for his glory. To make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Now, having been entrusted with such riches, Paul's passion was to make this gospel known to all people. And that is needs to be our passion as well. We need to make this gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, known to all people. And that is exactly what we're doing right now. As a matter of fact, I invite you to please like this video, this class, but also share it. Because you'll be doing your part in allowing other people to know this gospel and for them to get fed as well. Just a, just a small plug right there as a, as a commercial, right? He wants everybody to see and share the, in the fellowship of this mystery, which is a mystery precisely because it was unknown and unknowable until God revealed it. Did I, did I throw you off, God, right there? I'm going to explain why. Now, let's look at the fellowship of the mystery. We should carefully consider what this phrase means. It demonstrates that these are not only facts to know, but also a life to live, united in Jesus with other believers, without any separation such as existed between the Jews and the Gentiles, which of the beginning of the ages was been hidden, hidden in God. Now the truth, the great truth of the fellowship of the mystery was hidden. Before it was revealed after, but it was revealed after the finished work of Jesus on the cross. Now this reinforces the idea that there is a genu genuinely something new in the new covenant, and that is, and that it is wrong to consider Israel simply the Old Testament church and the church of the New Testament. Israel. Gablin says, this statement settles, this statement settles the question once for all uh, concerning the existence of the church, the body of Christ, in and during the Old Testament dispensations. Yet it is one of the most widespread views that the church existed from the beginning of creation and the words of promise contained in the Old Testament prophetic word are the promises of the church. And it is glorious in its glorious future on the earth in reigning over nations. Now, we'll stop right here to just explain. Now, the, these dispensations are time. These dispensations are several time segments in the Bible. But they're all leading to Jesus. They're all leading to His kingdom. They're all because of Him. Now, the church in the Old Testament, the widespread views of the church existed from the beginning of creation. Now, if you look on Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3, the creation, it, it already explained, it already uh, uh, foretold, it already uh, prophesied about the Messiah, about Jesus Christ himself. Why? Because when Adam and Eve uh, disobeyed God, when they sinned, God told the snake, from her seed, from her, will come someone that will hit you on the head. That will hurt your head. But you will only hurt his talent. 
That explains that Jesus was going to destroy Satan that was going to hurt him where it, where it hurts the most on his head, on top of him, but he was only going to hurt his ankle. Meaning, he was just going to the cross. From the seed of the woman was going to come the Savior. Who, that's someone who was going to hit him on the head. Genesis 3. Okay? We're talking about creation here. We're talking about the beginning here. Now, if you, if you look much closer, it says that the promises containing the Old Testament prophetic word and the promises of the church. Now, let's look at Abraham now. Genesis 12. God, when he called Abraham, he said, you're going to have a, de a, 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 a descendants as numerous as the stars. As numerous as the stars, meaning many. And from your seed will come the Savior. From the seed of Abraham came Jesus. But we will, we will explain more. If you have more questions about the dispensations, please let me know. So I can explain about the, dispen the Old Testament dispensations. Because like I said, there's tiny segments in the Bible. There's segments in the Bible. But I will, if you want me to explain them further, please mention down in the comments and I will explain them further. Now, we will enter on verses 10 and 12. And they say that, and it says, His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. According to His eternal purpose, that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him, and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. The purpose of God's mystery The purpose of God's mystery was that God is being of infinite wisdom, infinite wisdom and glory, and He wants His creatures to know His great and manifold wisdom. One purpose in His great plan of the ages is to reveal His wisdom. Understanding the character of God we can say that this is not a selfish or self self glory a glory motive in the way we think of the proud man showing his brains and accomplishments to everyone god does this for the glory of his creatures because the glory of the uh, of the creature is direct uh, directly connected to the glory of the Creator. This wisdom is manifold. Now the ancient Greek word polopoikilos, um, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, has the idea of intricacy, complexity, and great beauty. Trapp says, John Trapp says this, the half abundance of, cur uh, of curious variety in it, such as is seen in the best pictures or textures. That's his wisdom. It's manifold. It's intricate. It's complex. And it has great beauty. It also must be no made known Dean Alford points out that the words might be, uh, might be made known are emphatic and strongly contrasting the idea of hidden in Ephesians 3.9. And, and, I'll, and I'll let you uh, go back to Ephesians 3.9 because you, act, you automatically see the, con uh, the contrast between uh, these verses. 
might be uh, made known by the church to the principalities and powers. This explains how God will reveal his wisdom to all and to whom he reveals it. He will reveal it by his work in the church. And he will reveal it to angelic beings, meaning principalities and powers. Of course, God also wants to reveal this wisdom to the church. Yet in the big picture, God doesn't use the angels to reveal his wisdom to the saints, but instead he, he does use the saints to reveal his wisdom to the angelic beings, both faithful and fallen angels. This reminds us that we are called for something far greater than our own individual salvation and sanctification. We are called to be the means by which God teaches the universe a lesson. And a beautiful lesson it is. You are vessels where God can teach the most important lesson of the universe. We are surrounded by invisible spiritual beings that, and they are intently look upon us. Here, Paul draws back to the invisible curtain that hides these beings just as Elisha prayed at Dothan. Lord, I pray, open, open his eyes that he may see. And you can find that in 2 Kings 6, 17. These angelic beings sees us perfectly and know us far better than we know them. They are constantly watching us, brothers and sisters. These angelic beings watch us. But we need to have our eyes open. We need to have our eyes open. And if you're if you're, if you're blinded spiritually, ask God to return out your, your sight to in order to see and have the vision that God wants you to have. I'm not talking about physical vision. I'm speaking about spiritual vision. Right? Moll says what they have what they uh, uh, they to learn from us. Ah. They have to learn something which makes them watch us with wonder and with awe. They see in us indeed in all our weakness in all our sins. But they see a nature which wrecked by itself and yet made in the image of their God and ours. And they see this God at work upon the wreck of, uh, 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 of to produce results not only wonderful in themselves but doubtly wonderfully because of the conditions. Sometimes Christians get the crazy idea that God saved them and works in their life because they are somehow such great people. The angels see right through this. We might believe that it is because of us the angels know better. And I'll stop right here. I'm going to end right here. And with that, brothers and sisters, uh, I pray that, that uh, you and I were able to, to learn a little bit, to uh, comprehend the word a little bit more. I know that it might be a lot, and I know that you're, you're probably thinking, why so little time? We're trying to, to, to limit ourselves to 30 minutes. However, in these 30 minutes, Reflect upon God. Reflect that God has, has, has chosen you to be His. We're no longer separated. We have that opportunity to, to get closer to Him. And let us take that time. And let us take that opportunity to get closer to God. Now more than ever. I want to thank you for this time. Thank you, and don't forget that we have uh, 
uh, a class in person at 9 o'clock and our service at 10 o'clock in person but if you don't live in the San Diego area please uh, we have a live stream that you can find here on San Diego New Life dot org or you can go through our Facebook or YouTube pages in order to uh, also to see our uh, live stream at 10 o'clock also for the young for the young adults we have a, a conference this weekend 11 and 12 uh, there will be the young adult conference uh, and it, it will be called promises and the Georgia state director brother Caleb Adams will be joining uh, will be preaching uh, in this event so with that being said uh, I thank you uh, and may God bless you and we'll see I'll see you here next week God bless